You've done a lot of cool stuff through your career. Uh, if someone has never seen anything you've worked on or seen any episodes of anything, what is the first thing you'd like them watching and why? Oh, my God. Um, that's a tough question. Uh, I mean, the, you know, what's interesting is like uh, one of the first things I showed my kids that I had ever written was a show I wrote for Next Generation called Data's Day. And it introduced all, it was sort of like for somebody who didn't know what Star Trek was, I thought it was a good introduction to that world. And it was also sort of an uh, an insight into the character of Data. And when I watched it through their eyes, it told me a lot about sort of how I see the world, you know, and there's a part of me that is somewhat Data-like of trying to understand <laughs> the humanity around me and, and sort of trying and not getting all the social cues all the time. And uh, in some ways that, that episode is very sort of uh, illuminative of, of sort of me on some level. I could talk to you about Star Trek for the rest of the interview, but I'm here for For All Mankind and I got tons of questions. So every time I've spoken to you and it's been almost every season, I ask the same question and I will ask it today. Uh, when are we getting the Starship? <laughs> You're, we're getting there, getting closer all the time, man. This is the season where it's like, this is where the season becomes you're introducing sci-fi elements yeah. to the show while still staying grounded. Yeah. So now we're, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, I think you're you're we're definitely on that trajectory. Yes, I agree. So do you think before I know you have a seven season plan in the seven season plan? Did, does the words starship shows up or is it? <laughs> it's 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 uh it is certainly talked about. <laughs> I won't give away whether it's it's firmly in our plan or not. So I did a long interview with Matt and Ben, and I asked them, and I will ask you, um, is For All Mankind essentially the prequel show to the eventual Star Trek show of For All Mankind? Like, we're getting the seven seasons, and then all of a sudden there's a spinoff show that's two, three hundred years later, and that's the Starship show. Uh, you never know. We haven't really talked about it in those terms. We certainly talk about it thematically as the Star Trek prequel of, like, you know, how do you get to the optimistic kind of world that Star Trek lives in, you know, that kind of future. And that matters to us. Like, okay, here's Star Trek had posited this, this amazing future that we all kind of want to be a part of, but how do you get there? And so the show set out to sort of lay out the groundwork of how you get there. Now, whether the show actually does get there and then has its own kind of uh, uh, adventure like that is, is kind of a separate question that we haven't really tackled. Oh, I know. That's the reason I will keep asking it. Yes. Because, <laughs> you know, so, uh, I've seen the first seven episodes of season four. They're fantastic. I love this show so much. Uh, what are you most excited for fans to actually see this season? I'm really interested in the uh, the Margot storyline of, you know, Margot's life behind the Iron Curtain, you know, seeing her uh, struggling by herself. And, you know, she, they saved her. They kept her out of jail. And then they just kind of put her on an iceberg. And she's been sort of there by herself and no one's really taking her phone calls anymore. And yet she's determined to work her way back into to a space program one way, shape or form. And I think that's a really interesting journey for the character. And I think it's also just interesting to see how the Soviet Union has has evolved sort of this in this alternate timeline. One of the things you got to do this season is you guys filmed in Eastern Europe, specifically for her storyline. And it adds so much because you never feel like you're in L.A. Right. Yeah, that was really important that when we shot those scenes that you did feel like we were someplace else. Talk a little bit about, so one of the things is, uh, have you guys talked to Apple that God forbid you're not going to get renewed, they tell you so you can sort of wrap something up or you never had that conversation with them? Uh, we've never really had that conversation with them. They've, you know, they've been very supportive of the show from the very beginning and we've never felt, you know, sort of Damocles hanging over our head, you know, in, in the series so far. So, you know, either either that we're really lucky or we're just fools and you never know. <laughs> One of the things is that this season, and I said it earlier, is where you guys are starting to introduce science fiction elements. But you, the thing is, you always try to keep it as grounded as you can. Can you talk about where, like, how you're willing to add sci-fi to it or just in general adding sci-fi to the show finally? 
Well, you know, I mean, by its nature, we're in science fiction territory because we're doing things like moon bases and Mars bases that never existed and different kinds of spacecraft and propulsions and nuclear fusion. So almost by definition, it's a science fiction universe, right? And the further we go down this road, the more it diverges from the original timeline, the more deeply science fiction uh, the show becomes in that capacity. However, we're still it's still really important to us that we keep it grounded and that it's all feels real and it all feels plausible. So there's not, you know, we don't have aliens suddenly showing up in the show and they don't discover alternate dimensions and time travel and certain other sci, you know, sci-fi tropes that we have a specific uh, narrow band of science fiction uh, that we're trying to go down. And we, it's important to us that we stay within our lane. One of the things that I really like Toby's character and I'm not going to spoil anything, but um, he opens the door to a whole nother aspect of space and for all mankind. It feels like this is the season that's kicking a new door, if you will. Can you sort of talk about that aspect of the show and whatever you want to tease for Toby's character? Yeah, I mean, Toby plays a character called Miles and Miles is a, a civilian who was a oil rig worker on Earth. And as the fossil fuel industry started to uh, decline because of the uh, development of nuclear fusion and green energy on Earth, fossil fuel jobs started to go away. So he's sort of, you know, he's one of the losers in that situation. Even though the planet's getting better, there are certain people that are going to be out of jobs and, and are, are going to suffer for it. So he comes from that and he's looking for just a way to keep his family afloat, a way to make money. And he, by hook and by crook, he, he manages to get a job with Helios on Mars. And that opens up the world of, uh, of Mars and labor on Mars and sort of the upstairs downstairs quality of, well, there's the astronauts and then there's the civilians and they're not there for the same reasons. And they, their working conditions are very different. The way they look at each other uh, culturally is very different. How they get paid is very different. And the, the, the conflict between those two groups was something we were really interested in uh, exploring this year. And Miles's character was the great way to sort of you know, get a window into that world. What do you think would surprise fans of the show to learn about either the behind the scenes of the show or the actual making of the show? I think they'd be surprised to see how much of it is shot in Los Angeles, that Mars is really a soundstage and, you know, how difficult it is to pull this off week after week. It's a tremendous amount of work by a lot of people, in a lot of different departments to realize this. And if you were with us, like at the beginning of each season, you'd see everybody scrambling to essentially make a new show because we have to reinvent all the sets, new costumes, there's new cast coming in, older cast has to, you know, how are we doing their old age makeup? We have to, brand new spaceships have to be designed every year. The Mars base has to be reconstructed and rebuilt. And it's really an enormous undertaking every year to just really make it a brand new show. I say this as a hardcore fan, I am very thankful for all of your long hours. Um, I know you're involved in about a thousand things. So what else are you working on right now? I, I you know, I, I'm working at uh, several shows out at uh, 20th Century, which is part of, of, of Disney now. And I'm d developing a few shows for, for Disney Plus. And, you know, nothing has been greenlit because we're all still kind of waiting for the, the last strike to, to sort of resolve. But uh, I'm very hopeful and we'll, we'll see what develops over the course of the next year. Matt and Ben told me that this is the first time that uh, a writer's room hasn't been ready for the next season or hasn't been worked on due to the strike. So um, is there any movement? I spoke to them a week or two ago. Has there been any movement in the week or two about season five? Uh, there's definitely been more conversation about it. Yeah, I think you can sense things are starting to pick up and people are, you know, just industry wide, everyone's starting to gear up towards, OK, we know it's about to all happen again. So let's start talking in earnest about how we make uh, how we prepare the way for it. And that note, I need to stop, sir. I really am a fan of your work. Wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Good to see you.